fault Rick Minter for feeling like a proud papa when the Jets head into Pittsburgh to face the Steelers on Sunday. At different times during his tenure as the head coach at Cincinnati from 94 to 2003, Minter employed a couple of defensive assistants that you may have heard of, Rex Ryan and Mike Tomlin. And Rick Minter, now the co-defensive coordinator at Kentucky, joins us to talk about his star pupils, at least a couple of them. Coach, I just called you a proud papa. What is this like for you with these guys facing off on Sunday? Well, number one, Dana, it shows I can't lose on Sunday. <laughs> but, uh, I'm very proud of these guys. I was fortunate to have a lot of guys come and go through our tenure there at Cincinnati, and these are two of the brighter stars that went on to become great coaches. And uh, if we could do anything to help that uh, along the way and push those paths along the way, we certainly feel proud about that. You, you just said you can't lose on Sunday, so I'm going to ask, who are you rooting for on Sunday? Well, let me give you a quick update. I, I'm actually accessible to both guys. Uh, I love them dearly. They're both great family guys, great husbands, great coaches, great defensive minds. I've caught them at different tenures during their time, Mike at 26, Rex at 32, 33. But more recently, I've had great access to the Jets. And while Mike's already won a ring, I'd be pulling for Rex, to say the least, and, it, and the Jets to make sure that they uh, get the job done up there. So, actually, I'm pulling for the Jets. I uh, couldn't lose either way. Um, yeah, and I, that's fair because it is true because Mike does already have that ring that Rex doesn't have as a head coach. Two different personalities. You don't need me to tell you that in these guys. I'm going to start with Rex and get some idea of what they were like when they were under you. Um, what was he like as compared to how we know him now? Well, Rex hasn't changed a great deal. The difference is now he is the face of the program. And while he was a defensive coordinator for me, uh, when he opened up our nine-on-seven drill in spring practice with a free safety right up the A-hole, so to speak, uh, and hit the running back right in the mouth, and you know the Rex Ryan uh, era had begun in Cincinnati. <laughs> I think it was Buddy Go Blitz or something like that. But, uh, no, Rex hasn't changed a great deal. Uh, he was always uh, kept the room light as a great teacher. He instills great confidence in those around him. Uh, what I love about Rex, he's just so brutally honest. Uh, the fact that he has the ability to laugh at himself uh, makes people see a little bit different side of him than uh, uh, what others might see in the classroom and in the, in the war rooms. But he, he, he is a great, brilliant coach, but because he keeps it light, he has the players hungry to play for him all the time. They always have his back. Uh, that's what they like about Rex, and that really hasn't changed. Our defensive players are uh, Cincinnati rallying around Rex, just like you see him doing now. Now, how about Mike Tomlin? As I said, different than Rex. What was he like when he was your defensive back coach in 99-2000? Uh, well, when Mike walked in the door on that Sunday afternoon when I interviewed him, and you met Mike for the first time, you saw those same steely eyes. You saw that great beaming smile and that articulation that comes out of Mike Tomlin, and that never changed. He was just a star on the rise, and you knew at the moment that he got to Cincinnati. He was just a quarterback coach at that time while a contributing factor on our staff. He was destined to uh, move on far, further and beyond Cincinnati, and he heard he got hired at Tampa Bay by my mentor in coaching, which was Monty Kiffin. And uh, once Monty called me, and, and I recommended him also to to Monty, it was it was a done deal. And all of a sudden, he worked for Tony for five years, and uh, now you know the rest of that story. I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, we, we talk so much, or we have this week, about how there's such different style of co their coaching styles different. There are different styles of people out there. What's something that's similar about them that you know that we don't just because you know them better than we are? Well, they're both very determined guys. They're people. Uh, they're people-oriented persons. In other words, players like playing for these guys. Yep. Uh, they know how to connect. Uh, if you look at three out of the four Super Bowl potential teams coming up this weekend, three of them are defensive coaches. I think there's a, a kind of a mantra and a and camaraderie that a defensive team and a staff and a coach can develop with his team. Maybe sometimes different than that of an offensive type coordinator that's maybe more business-like because defense is played on emotion and compassion and unity and uh, in-your-face type of attitude. And while Mike is a little bit more straightforward, uh, doesn't necessarily show his bravado. I know he's just as strong a competitor down inside as is Rex. Rex just has that Ryan quality that puts himself out there. And uh, he's just so brutally honest about everything. And Rick, you know, uh, Rex could probably say there's pedigree there if he goes on to win a Super Bowl. And we know, obviously, Mike has already won one. I'm wondering for you, like, how much credit do you get? How much, the bragging rights-wise, how much do you get here for, for these guys and where they are right now? 
Well, I just take great pride in it. I, I think a head coach is only as good as those people he surrounds himself with. And I was just blessed to be able to surround myself with young up-and-coming stars like Tomlin, uh, like Ryan, like John Harbaugh, like Joker Phillips, like Jimbo Fisher, right on down the line. I was very blessed to have good coaches there. And, uh, in fact, I was told one reason I was fired is I couldn't keep good coaches there. <laughs> and so... So I guess the Jet fans and the Steelers fans are happy I couldn't keep these guys. Yeah, I don't mean to laugh at the fact that you were fired, but it is a valid point. You know what they say? But, uh, a great leader is the guy who's able to put people under him who he knows are going to succeed and allow them to succeed under him. Rick, thanks so much for joining us, and enjoy the game on Sunday. Well, thank you very much. AFC title game.